those who are present here today, our number is down some. We have several who are sick and not able to be with us this morning, and we need to check on them to see if there's anything that we can do that might be of help to them. Our lesson this morning is this world is not our home. Sometimes we get bogged down in this busy life and everything is in a fast overdrive. We tend to lose sight of the fact that this world is not our home. We get so involved that many times we let our minds be moved from the things that are very important. And reading this lesson text, these all died in faith. These died in faith, I believe these here are the, all of those, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they all died in faith, they did not receive the, the promised land that they had been promised, but by faith they looked forward for the time that they would. But their faith was sort of tried at times, and they continued even until their death. And their death was consistent with their faith. They departed this life still believing in the promise, not only believing but anticipating the fulfillment of the life beyond. They looked for something that is greater than this world had offered. They deserved better country, that is, a heavenly, where God is not ashamed to be called of God, for he has prepared a city for them a city. You know, God blessed uh, the, the Israelites, I mean, all the way from Abraham's promise down to Jacob. In the forming of the Israelites, he had promised them the land of promise. We know that those who had received the promise of Abraham, he did not, uh, he was not allowed to enter in, or he didn't go and enter in. But he believed something deeper than that in verse 13 and 14. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them before off that either faith, who persuaded them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. You know, we need to take inventory of our lives and realize too that there is a place promised for the faithful children of God. And only those who follow the, the pattern that is by faith and look forward to that great city that Jesus has gone to prepare for us in John chapter 14. And that he is coming again and we look forward to that time. And I take what is said in these two verses, a, descript a description of the Christian condition that are living in this world today. That we are living by faith. And by faith we can see it afar. I mean the promise. We are the faithful children of God. There are several thoughts that come to mind as we study this passage of Scripture this morning. First of all, the Christian does not realize he has great hope here, but he anticipates hereafter. I know God blesses us in so many ways today. He blesses us in so many ways that uh, we even begin to take them for granted that, and fail to appreciate them as we should. But these patriarchs, they died in faith, but the promise was not fulfilled in their lifetime. They did not inherit Canaan. You know, there are people living today and those that live from Pentecost forward under the new dispensation. They too are waiting for that great promise to enter into the promised land. They believed it would happen and they died in faith, believing that. If we're following God faithfully, we can have that same promise and the same hope. That we have a promise of those who are prepared for the coming event. Will Christ come in, in judgment? They anticipated the possession of a blessing. And the explanation here is that I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. You know, these people are fully realized that this world was not their home. But Jacob made that promise, or made that statement in Genesis 49 and verse 18. And he said, I, you know, I have waited for thy salvation. 
we two are waiting for the day when we can be delivered from this world. Secondly, the Christian today must realize this world is not his home. There in verse uh, 13 of our lesson text. You know, Christians have a tendency to say, I really believe this world is not our home, but we really believe that. You know, there are some times that we get so attached to the world that death is a horror to even to think about it. I mean, a taboo subject. We don't even like to think about it. There are a lot of Christians who get so involved, they lose sight of the, the more important things of life. You know, sometimes Christians on their way to that great promised land, they will miss services for any, for actually no excuse at all. They will, you know, uh, become complacent and really a whole hump attitude that everything is well. And for instance, people miss every service on Sunday, you know, with uh, maybe a, a headache that they wouldn't dare miss work on Monday morning. And we wonder, you know, how do we rationalize this thing? Do we really believe you know, this world is not our home? We live as though we're going to be here forever. So we should not allow anything to stand between our service to God. A lot of people will let their work interfere with their Christian life. Some people even trade sports for a Christian living. And doing this, we're getting our priorities all wrong. We have our minds set on the spiritual or the temporal things and not on the, the spiritual things which are above. But Paul in Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, If you then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Here's what Christ is saying at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the things of the earth, for you're dead. And your life life is here with God in Christ, and when Christ is alive, shall appear. You will appear with him in glory. These are things that we need to look forward to. Abraham and Sarah, Jacob and Isaac, they died in faith. It means they died faithful. And we can expect no less and, and, and go to heaven. We must be faithful until death. Revelation 2.10, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's the promise that we have. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26, Jesus made a statement. What would man profit if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what would he give in exchange for his soul? For a good illustration, you could turn and read to the rich man Lazarus. The rich man had everything, Lazarus had nothing. The rich man lived in comfort and luxury upon the earth. Lazarus had nothing. But when they died, the rich man, he was suffering, and Lazarus had it all. He was comforted. Do you suppose, what do you suppose that rich man would have given for a drop of water to cool his tongue? He was tormented and crying. He would give everything he had if he could just send, uh, send word back to his father's house. Lest his brothers come to this place also. But he didn't get it. And the fourth thing that comes to my mind, why is this world not the Christian's home? There should be some reason for this. Well, that's not suited, suitable for our eternal home. This world is not. Because here we die, Hebrews 9 and 27. It's a part of that man wants to die, but after death comes the judgment. That's the lot of mankind. This is the appointment that God has made for every individual that has ever lived, or ever will, see life upon this earth. That is an appointment that God has made for him, and every man will keep it. There is no exception. Because you're on this earth, it's not suitable because you're on this earth, we might have many hardships and many sorrows and disappointments and heartaches and lives. In Psalms 38 verse 17, for I am ready to haul, and my sorrow are before me, or continuing before me, David said. There was time that uh, David was grieved at heart, for instance, at the death of his child. And there's nothing like it. He said, I'm ready to haul, for my sorrow are continuing before me. 
Yeah, our pleasures are only transit. Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 8, But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, where there shall be many, all that cometh to his vanity. It's all there. It's all foolishness what we put into life because we'll leave it all behind. So we think about the things that are above, not on things the earth. And the fifth act comes in the mind that the world does not give the blessings for which we are looking for, we sign for. Job realized that he would not live always in Job chapter 7, verse 16. He made that statement. Job said, I loathe it. I would not live always. Let me alone for my days are vanity. Job and all of his suffering, he knew that he was going to die someday. He realized that. Job also realized that it was a better place. These patriarchs understood more than sometimes we might have thought they had uh, understood. In Psalm 55 and verse 6, or, yeah, verse 6, And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and I would be at rest. That was David's word. You know, if he had wings, he could just fly and get away from it all. Because this world is not suitable for our home. It does not give the blessing that we're looking for and that we're longing for while we're here. And number six, the thought comes to my mind is heaven is our home. And that gets right down to the heart of our lesson. But now they desire a city, a, a country, a better country. They live a heavenly world. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for the MOC. And that's what we're looking for today, and that's why the world is not a home. We're looking for something much better than that. And John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3, Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, be also in me, in my Father's house for many mansions, and I've so ever told you. I go and I prepare a place for you, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive him to myself before I am. They may be also. There are many mentions there. I mean, there is room for every individual. In my father's house, there are many mentions. He has prepared that. We have here a building of God in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house this tabernacle was a song, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We know that this body, this earth, this body is not suited for heaven. There must be a change, and it will be a glorious body when this change comes. And though this earth and hell is tabernacle to be dissolved, it's going to be put back in the heart of the earth. The body is going back to the rest of the earth from which it came. But the Spirit of God it goes back to God who gave it, and waiting for an eternal rest that heavenly home where God will not be ashamed of us for he will be a God to us and we'll be resting in that great city that he has prepared. There will be free from all sorrow. We read in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 There will be no tears there for God shall wipe away all tears from the eyes. There will be no more sorrow nor crying or any sad goodbyes. While the former things are passed away. All the things that cause misery and hardships and heartaches in this life will all be gone and God will wipe away the tears from their eyes. That's what we're looking for. You know, David, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, David, when his child was at the point of death, I mean, he passed, he was not, I mean, he was without food or drink. No one came into it because he was, I mean, all three of to everyone. And there he was weeping and, and he was fasting for his child. But when he finally brought him word, he said, the child is dead, isn't he? So the child is dead. David got up, he went and he washed himself. So he was looking. And came in and asked a question. 
fly when a child was living if you fast and not eat or drink. He said, I didn't know what maybe God would see fit for that child to live. And I was continuing to pray for him and fast him. He said, now the child is gone. I cannot bring him back. I can go for where he is, but he shall not return to me. So David, David and, and losing a child even, when he realized that that child had gone to a better place, David said, I can go where he is. You know, that promises for us to wait to All the loved ones that have died in the faith, Someday we can be with him if we will make heaven our goal. We don't set our things on our sights on things of the earth, but on things which are above. This world is not the Christian's home, and I'm thankful for that. Because as we get older, we begin to experience things that we never thought we'd experience in lifetime. I do. I may be the only one who has a new opinion about every day, but I doubt that. That goes with the process of aging. And it's wonderful to know that if we'll be faithful to our Lord, that when this life is over, we'll not have to be afraid of heart attacks, cancer, strokes, or anything of this nature which I fear is not of the world. Might be afraid of that. Because God is going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. These patriarchs looked for something better. Their lives was their testimony that they believe this. What about our lives today? You know, we uh, sometimes we get so scared of death, we don't want to even mention in our midst. Or maybe someone said, well, I, I think I'm dying. Oh, no, don't think like that. We need to think like that because we are going to die. What we need to be thinking about is preparation and realizing this world is not our home. We as Christians must live as they did to enter into heaven. They all died in faith means they died faithfully, looking for the promised land of Canaan. We live all of our lives looking for that place called heaven, the home of the soul. And where God will be our Father, and we'll be his children, and he'll not be ashamed of us. We don't want to take any chances about this. If you're here this morning and you've never been washed in the blood of the Lamb in baptism, that should be your number one priority. Be baptized for the remission of your sins. The Lord will forgive you, he'll add you to the church, and then be faithful unto death and receive the crown of life. If you have been baptized and you've wandered away, your faith is not as it should be. You no longer live in that great hope of eternal life. It is possible for us to uh, go into to services to be a ritual than to bring a spiritual uplift. As we are partaking of the Lord's Supper this morning, do we really let our minds go back to that experience of love that he showed, showed for us and pertaining to his body and his blood as soon as we think about it. We need to set our mind on things we love, not on things the earth. And if your faith is not as it should be, it is weakening, it no longer means, service no longer means to you what it once did. You need to be renewed. And you will be restored to your first love. And you can do it now as together we stand and as we sing. Are you